welcome to a quick fix video. Thank you for being here. Not just because it's winter, mold can happen at any time in our orchid hobby. And there are several reasons for that. But first of all, look who is still in bloom. And yes, she is the candidate. So we've got a bloom to admire. And then we've got mold <clears throat> not to admire. This is Brassocatlia gyra kiku. Her bloom has been open now for at least six weeks. She is looking a little bit tired in the viewfinder, so that shows me she will be going over soon. But to the naked eye, she still looks fresh. Anywho, we love the bloom, but we do not love the mold. And let me tell you that this is not a pretty sight. So if you're squeamish, look away. Well, maybe I should have warned you before, but the title would probably given you a heads up. Mold, high humidity, isn't that amazing? I'm here in southern Spain and I'm always moaning how low my humidity is. But it's winter and it has been raining for the past five days. The humidity in the air has been about 95% throughout that time period and mold can happen even if everything is going well in the pot. But more often than not, it is because of high humidity that you can get mold. Lecker impurities are also possible. In this case, I would say it is not my lecker because she was recently repotted. This is clean lecker. Well, it was until now. The main factor for mold though, if all the other factors are out of the way, as in your media is clean, is because there is decay in the pot. That means that something is dying and there's plenty of chakula for the mold to feed on. Chakula in Swahili means food. <laughs> so, but you know, the food for the mold is always, there's some kind of a rot. So you've got three factors that will give you mold. And it's not always something that you have done wrong. It'll just happen. This pot was fine three days ago. And lo and behold, we have mold because of the conditions being just right for this to manifest itself. So what I'm going to do, quick fix, is just spray the surface of the pot with hydrogen peroxide, 3%. And yes, now we are going to get into, why not just repot? And that would be fabulous. If your current climate is such that you can do that, repot, clean up the root system, and then put it back into LECA. And that is the method for inorganic growing. But let's just consider that this orchid has had quite the treatment in the past. It had rhizome rot. This is the piece that's looking the best. I managed to save this piece and then she bloomed. So we're given the history of an orchid, even if you're growing an inorganic media and she would go back into the inorganic media, one has to consider the stress that it will take. The mold is only aesthetical. We don't want that to manifest itself, especially as you can see, it is fizzing away. It is going away also from the lecker as it deteriorates and we keep our media clean that way. Eventually, we can also go in and just wipe it off, get the strands off and be done with it. And that doesn't mean it won't return, but at least we will be able to deal with it like that. So repotting, of course, would be best practice, but given the circumstances, that this orchid doesn't even have new root growth, I would highly advise against repotting. New root growth is a plan B. It'll help the orchid to survive another stress factor, especially if the climate and temperature isn't correct. So when we say needs must in inorganic growing, we can say needs must to a degree. The needs are here to stop the mold from getting worse. The must repot is not the case because the media is not breaking down and we don't have any roots, so we can wait. This is just a point of exercise now, just to make sure that the mold doesn't get cold and doesn't actually become the main plant of the pot as opposed to the orchid that is in there. So if you are having mold issues in any time of year, but you're growing in organic media, especially if it is using bark of any size, I would then suggest you can let the pot dry out completely between waterings. And that is a setup, the wet dry cycle setup for organic growing. If you are growing in sphagnum moss and an orchid has mold, then I would also recommend the same thing. Spray with hydrogen peroxide at the surface of the pot just to keep the mold in check until such a time that you do have root growth and you can repot. 
because the sphagnum moss deep down inside the pot is probably still fine. I wouldn't intervene if I saw some mold on the surface. I would be doing exactly the same that I am doing right now if it was a pure sphagnum moss media. The thing with LECA, self-watering, semi-hydro, any of these setups, letting the media dry out is not an option. That is not what the setup is about. We don't want the dried up LECA to desiccate the roots that are used to a moist environment, no matter what time of year. So that solution for the organic side of things does not work for the inorganic side of things. But once the hydrogen peroxide has done its job and has stopped fizzing, then it just turns into water, which, hey, semi-hydro, self-watering, makes sense, doesn't it? It just turns into water. So whatever remains in the pot, it's just water. And that is all we need to know. Nothing's gonna hurt the orchid in here because whatever is remaining now after the fizzing is water. Once this has also been dealt with for the intermediate time period, we continue our care as per usual. Keep flushing. If your orchid is in active growth, keep fertilizing. Remembering the time of year regarding at what, what dosage. Nothing changes except for the fact, keep monitoring if the mold returns and then another spritz of hydrogen peroxide where it appears until such a time that the orchid grows new roots and then it is possible to take her out give the root ball a thorough cleanup and put her back into leka, lava rock, whatever media you're using that is inorganic, but this time fresh. Don't reuse this, sterilize the media again, put it back into storage and you're good to go. Know that with hydrogen peroxide 3% you're safe. Any higher and you could cause root burn. But the 3% we use regularly anyway. We always talk about snail treatment. That is not the case here. But seeing as we're spraying for snails and any other pests that might have come into the collection and we use hydrogen peroxide 3% to clean up roots, spray them before we pop them up, this is not going to harm the orchid at all. And you've got your mold in check. Once again, just keep monitoring and rinse repeat if necessary, as in repeat hydrogen peroxide. The rinse was just a figure of speech. Your care afterwards is as per usual. And just a little bit of grooming where we can reach. No harm done. And while I was doing this, I just had one more little thought. I can always pick out the top part of the leka and replace with fresh. But know that the spores of the mold that weren't dealt with in the pot with this application of hydrogen peroxide, they will start again. So. I don't normally pick out the top part of the lecker. I'm just adding to my workload. Hydrogen peroxide will do the job until such a time I can go in and clean her up. I said this was a quick fix. It is, and I have spoken for 10 minutes. I don't know how I do it. I need to find a way to somehow compress my information without taking up too much of your time. However, if you're still here, then you can hear my apology. And I do apologize for talking so much. In my opinion, there are so many variables that if I don't address them, I feel like I've left out a situation. We can always discuss that in the comments below, but if the title says quick fix, the quick fix is true. Spritz, 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 let it go to explain the variables. That takes time. So thank you. If you're still here, please accept my apology. I hope this was helpful, especially this time of year in the Northern Hemisphere and if there were any panic stations in other collections. Have yourselves a beautiful, beautiful day. On one condition, please, that you stay safe and take care. Bye.